Hello, everybody. Jeff Mason with Simple Biz 360 Podcast. Welcome to the show today. Hey, do you guys want to get more output from your input? Do you want to actually uh, make things happen rather than wonder what happened or watch things happen? Do you want a happier customer base and a healthier bank account? Well, I'm sure the answer is yes to all these, as I do as well. Well, listen, if you could... Give me about 10 minutes, grab a cup of coffee, let's share some time together, and we're going to go over a really cool episode today. Um, we're going to dip into the hockey world, so and, and just, just get ready for that. So again, we want to just shout out to Half Coast Studios, Matt and Dietz behind the glass here, working the boards, engineering, great sound quality, great crisp color. We really appreciate it. Hey, if you like the show and you want to subscribe, we invite you to go to the, if you're on YouTube, look in the lower right-hand corner of our, your screen. You'll see that little pinwheel favicon. We invite you to hover over that. It takes you to the YouTube channel. You do have to be signed in to YouTube to uh, subscribe, but we got a couple different spots to do that. We're on 26 listening platforms. You can subscribe there as well, or just join us every week. We'd love to have you anyway. 7.30 every Thursday morning, Central Time, uh, everything comes out. So listen, our businesses, our business life, we move at warp speed, right? Everything is go, 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 do, do, do. Family, we're blending family and business and pickups and drop-offs and customer requests and vendor relations and go to the distribution center, go to the fulfillment center. Gosh, we just got all kinds of things that we're constantly getting, you know, just we're, we're constantly moving and nothing seems to slow down. But it's kind of in the slowdown that I want to I wanna unpack today and bring us in to some understanding that can really help us do wonders in our businesses. And we're going to take a page out of uh, one of the best athletes of all time, a gentleman who played in the National Hockey League, Wayne Gretzky. Now, Wayne Gretzky, they call him the great one. If you're not a hockey person, you have to understand that this guy was elite. Where everyone else was, uh, you know, was here, this guy was up here. Why do I say that? Well, let's just take a look at his total points in his career versus the second place person. So when you look at Wayne Gretzky, he amassed 2,857 points, which for those of you who aren't hockey enthusiasts, it's combining your goals and combining your assists. The assists are what basically you're helping another person score a goal. The second person in line, Yermer Yager, he was at 1921. That's a difference of 936 points. So Wayne was that much higher than the second place person in points. Now, I loved... I love, I'm fascinated with what makes him great. I heard his dad once interviewed, and I'm sorry that, uh, sorry to hear that he's passed away recently, so our condolences go out to the Gretzky family. But uh, Wayne's dad, in an interview, uh, had said that, you know, what really catapulted Wayne into that greatness, to that eliteness, was when he learned how to pass a puck into the play. And what he meant by that was as the play was developing, Wayne could see where the play was going, and he passed the puck to where the play was going. So in essence, he made things happen, and, and that's really what was the, you know, was the, the cool aspect of his greatness. Now, to give you an idea on assists, right? So I told you about total points, but if you take a look at assists, he had 1,963 assists. The second place person all time, Ron Francis, had 1,243. I believe it's Ron. 1,249. So that was a difference of 714 uh, points there. So you, again, you can see how wonderfully gifted this person was. So, um, you know, I, I had a cool thing happen to me one time. I, I had the pleasure of bumping into a guy that played NHL uh, hockey. And uh, it was, you know, played at a high level and I'm in his place of business and we're in the back and I see this thing hanging on the wall and I look over and it's him, a cent he's facing off against Wayne Gretzky. They were both centers in this particular game. And I said, wow, you played against the great one. He goes, yeah. I said, okay, I'm fascinated with the great one. What made him so awesome? What was it about him that was so spectacular? The gentleman said, have you ever been in a car accident? And I said, yeah, I've been in a plenty of them. In fact, I've had 
broken three windshields and uh, I lost five teeth out of one of my accidents. So yeah, I'm well acquainted. He said, well, if in a car accident, I've been in one and, and what happens is you see things in slow motion. You see kind of the, the glass breaking in on you and you can almost see the cracks in the glass. It's that slow motion. I said, okay, I'm tracking with you. And he said, well, he goes, you know, I, I, I went out and played hockey every night of my life, but there were some instances where the game slowed down for me. And he said, I could remember one night going on the ice for, for practice and I just got on the ice, my skates hit the ice and I said, something's different tonight. What is, I just feel different. I feel like I'm seeing the game differently. And that was his only hat trick or one of his only hat tricks, I'm not sure, uh, that he ever had in his life. And a hat trick is three goals in one game. But he was seeing everything in slow motion, he said. So he said, I tell you all of that to answer your question. In my opinion, Wayne Gretzky saw the game of hockey in slow motion every night. He was able to just see things we weren't able to. Ted Williams, famous baseball player, always said the reason he was such a good hitter, he could see the seams on the baseball. His eyes could pick that up as this 95-mile-hour pitch was headed towards him. So the great one slowed down. So can we take anything from that? Yes, we can. We can slow our businesses down and compartmentalize it into bite-sized morsels that we can train on, we can learn and adapt to, but more importantly, it allows us to see what areas we can improve and what areas that we um, really are, um, you know, adept at or, or inept at and, you know, where we can shore up our, our loose ends. So, you know, if you think about it that way, what is slowing the business to you and me look like? Well, I'm going to try something here. Hopefully we don't have any calamity, but I printed this out. And um, I was a sales trainer, have about uh, 1,300 hours of sales training, classroom environment in front of me, or behind me rather. And uh, I'll set this up again. Sorry about that. And, and basically what this is, is a sales schematic. And what this does, hopefully you can see it where you are, but what this does is this allows us to look at a sales presentation and break it down into bite-sized morsels. And, you know, it delivers a better product, yes, but what it really allows us to do is to see what we've missed, see where we need to go back to, because this is predicated on one step leading to the other. But you could, you know, you could score this. You could turn it into a hundred, you know, hundred uh, unit score sheet. And, you know, it's a great tool to train people. But this thing is embedded in my head. You could give me a blank piece of paper and I could literally regurgitate this without looking at it, uh, you know, word for word. Because it's that, it's that heavily ingrained in my mind. So this was a way to break the sales process down to a sizable bite size, you know, chunks where we could manage it, train it and, and deliver a better product to the customer. And the interesting thing about that is, you know, to, uh, to all of us who were in sales and we learn stuff like that. Um, it may sound canned to us, but if you really practice it enough and you say it well to the customer, it sounds planned having some issues keeping this up there, but well, we're just going to hold this up here for the for the purposes of this demo. But this, uh, so let's say now, I don't own a restaurant, but I've been to enough of them. You know, I travel uh, in eight states in the upper Midwest. I've, you know, stay in a hundred hotels a year and I have eaten in hundreds of thousands of restaurants. So, you know, I have a lot of experience. Uh, I've known I've been, I, I knew I was going to write this book in 1989. So I've cataloged a lot of my own experiences and, and this kind of allows me to say, well, if I was a restaurant owner, here's what I would do to create a better customer experience, slow the business down and put it into bite-sized chunks. So I'm, I just did the first three phases, but you know, a family of four comes in, they have reservations, they don't, they come in. Now you have your first 30 second phase, right? You got 30 seconds to make a great impression. So what is that impression builder? What are you doing with that? How can you train your people to do that the way you want and deliver the proper perception builder right at the 30 second level? Now, person at the front behind the desk says, okay, Great. Let me take you to your seat on the way to the seat. Hey, 
you know, smile, right? Remember to smile and thank him for coming in. Hey, what uh, what are you guys doing today? You uh, just a family day? There's, there's four of you. You guys going at hiking? You going shopping? You guys got anything great planned for the rest of the day, right? So you show a little bit of genuine interest, right? You sit them down. You get them seated immediately. You ask, is there any special needs here? Does anyone need a gluten-free menu? Can I help you out with any of that? No? Okay, great. Hey, listen, Tammy or Jimmy, whoever it is, is going to be your waiter or waitress. Uh, they're going to come by in a, in a couple minutes to take your drink order. Um, the bathrooms, you just go down the hall, take a right right after the bar. That's where the men's and ladies' rooms are if you need them. We've got towels in there. We've got you know everything you need in there to, to feel secure. And, you know, we hey, it's a germ free environment. We do our best to, to be COVID, um, you know, uh, empathetic and, and clean up our place the best we can. So, Hey, you know, thank you for coming in and pretty soon, uh, you'll get your drink. So boom, that phase ends. The next phase comes and that's your server, right? Again, smile and thank you. You've got to, you know, you can, you have the chance to slow the business down and learn that, Hey, we can smile more. Where can we smile more? Well, right in the opening. Hey, my name's Tammy. How you doing? Thanks for coming in today. Really appreciate it. Um, you know, um, by the way, are we have any split bill situations here I should be cognizant of? Uh, one bill altogether, two bills? Uh, okay, great. Hey, ladies first. Always treat the ladies first, right? Okay, what do you guys want to drink? You go through that. You get everything ordered. Then you repeat the order back to everyone so everyone realizes you got it right. And that's a big confirmation part of the process. Just rip through that and say, okay, great. I'll be back in a few minutes with some bread and some drinks. Again, smile and thank them for coming in. And boom, it goes into the next phase. So just in a little grill and bistro set, you know, mock setup here, uh, this is just a great way to slow that business down and uh, create an opportunity to deliver a better experience. And, you know, you're making something happen rather than just shooting from the hip and, you know, you're leaving it to the front desk person to do it their way. You're leaving it to the wait staff to do it their way. You're leaving it to everybody to do it their way when you might have a better solution. And I encourage you to think enough to create a better solution because you will make things happen in your restaurant rather than watch what happened. So that's just a great way to take some uh, exciting information from the world of hockey, gr the greatest of all, Wayne Gretzky. And hey, we are in Canada with hockey, with Wayne Gretzky, right? So let's stay in Canada for the Lost in the Shuffle track. So who is it today? Well, you know I love the guests too. Absolutely love them. So, and you probably know from previous episodes, I had the pleasure in 1987 to take a plane ride with uh, not only the Guess Who, but there are two members of the Guess Who, Randy Bachman and Burton Cummings, but also the Drifters were on that plane and they were going up to, to play the Lemon Club up in Toronto. But the, the Guess Who was on their way to be inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. They were going to beat their other bandmates up there. So, you know, it was a, I, I had a great opportunity to talk to Burton Cummings. He sat down with me. We talked for a few minutes and... I asked him, uh, you know, about a song. I asked him about a bunch of stuff, but I asked him about a song called Undone. What was Undone all about? And he told me it was just, you know, it's about a girl getting unraveled on drugs. And just, you know, the, the, the time that we wrote this, that Randy Bachman wrote it, it was just something that was happening more often than not. And, you know, we, we, we put it to a song. It was on their Canned Wheat album, 1969 music, the song called Undone. So what's the message here with this song? Don't let your business get all undone. Learn from the great one, slow it down, put some intentionality and deliberateness into it and, and put it into bite-sized morsels where you can manage it, train it and deliver a better product. So remember, Three Y Challenge, respond to all inquiries, uh, always follow up, but the, but the real, real Piece de resistance for customers is the follow through, right? Give them that follow through. And remember, this is a great exercise. Customer percep perception is customer reality. So make sure you strengthen that perception because it is going to be what they come to know as real. Thank you so much. Have a great day and we'll see you next week.